Every serious incident on the road needs to be investigated. A dedicated team from Gwent Police takes on this challenge, day and night. There's a story that's indelibly written into the road surface and the crashed cars. Our job is to find out what's happened. You should survive that collision. So why hasn't he? These are lucky to be alive. I think if it was a much bigger vehicle, they'd have far more serious injuries. So what we need to establish is the reasons is why it's lost control and how it's lost control. This one's likely to go to court. They won't know where to go. No. Looking at serious offences, you have got to do it properly. Unless you do all this work, you just won't get the answers. You have to do this so you can answer those questions when they come, because they will come. All in the day's work for the crash detectives. It's just running between cyclists. So, are they breathing? Yes. No, what is not breathing? Come on, we need your help now. One severe casualty, and crew's working pretty hard on them right now. This there, this there. Would you mind helping just get this next Yeah, because that's how we're heading from. Has anyone found the car? No. Still, no. Still no luck. I think the car's run off. This is a hit and run. Collision investigator PC Richie Wyatt is making his way to the scene. The call came in just after four o'clock. Daylight is now fading. By the time I got there, it was dark. There are no witnesses to this other than the four cyclists. A group of cyclists have been hit by a car that has then been driven away. Richie is now getting more details from the senior investigating officer. So this bike was the first rider. That wasn't hit. Yeah. Clips the second rider. First rider, male. Second rider, female, their husband and wife. Third rider, male, suspected broken right leg. Clips the third rider. Yeah. Broadside into the fourth rider. The fourth cyclist was out riding with her sister and their partners. She's been airlifted to hospital with life-threatening injuries. The way the bikes are staggered here, they're riding in single-file formation. is an unusual one because the car's coming in the opposite direction, crosses the wrong side of the road and wipes them out. One of the cyclists has been able to describe what happened. The first cyclist says, as they're coming up the hill to the left-hand bend, he is already in the middle of the road, straddling the centre line, fighting to gain control. And as a result, he's hit her. She's actually vaulted the crash barrier and landed there just the other side of the grass verge. The car then veered off across the road and crashed into trees before driving off. He's absolutely decimated, isn't he? It's a sign in it as well, isn't it? You can see the two posts. He's actually taking you see, almost a 90 degree bend in that one pole. He's absolutely thumped into that tree, through that one, hit that one, and then exited, losing oil. Officers searching the area have found a damaged car nearby. The vehicle's been abandoned approximately, I don't know, half a mile from you in the lane. See the sign there, T-junction? Up that road. They now need to establish if this Volkswagen Jetta is the car involved. Richie's colleague Dean Burnett has gone to take a look. We've just turned up at the uh, scene where the car has been abandoned. I believe it's been pushed into the side here by vehicle occupants. But there's significant damage to the back panel. You see, as we come around the front, See, there's a significant amount of damage. Fair bit of bodywork missing off the car. What we believe is hit a tree. Dean can't come to the scene. I can't go to that scene because of the risk of cross contamination. So we just it's a bit of common sense and use our video calling so we can see each other, show the scene. Here we are. 
All right, Dean? They need to establish if the damage on the car is consistent with the evidence that Richie has found at his scene. He's come in there, hit that tree, and then he's hit that tree as well. Look at that one. And then here's all his, here's all his car here, then. That's the front end, then. It's got to be the front, is it? Yeah, you parked the bumper there. Yeah. The that bit? Yeah. That part of the bumper there. Front offside. Yeah. Now they've linked the car to the scene. Focus shifts to finding out who was behind the wheel. They know the registered owner's details, but tracking him down isn't proving so straightforward. What's the update with the driver? He's not the address. He's, he's abandoned the vehicle. We've checked the RO's details. Yeah. So we've gone to that address and he's not there. No, but there's been some phone calls made um, whereby he's admitted being involved. Right. The driver, and he's going to keep his head down until the effects of alcohol wears off. As the search for the driver continues, Richie is joined by his colleague, Sergeant Bob Witherell. Just going to go up here and see if there's any marks further up. He's middle of the road here. He's cut the corner, hasn't he? He's come down here, a bit sharp. You've got a good view though there, oh, yeah, I mean, if yeah. you're going to cut it. As Richie and Bob retrace the car's path, they've just found where it first lost control. That's fresh. Yeah. So he's, he's not braking it. He's the wheels not are rotating. He's rotating, yeah. So there's a whole offside of the vehicle is now out here. Yeah. They got nowhere to go. No. You are that. Uh, there. He's come right into her, hasn't he? So he's pet. If you look, those marks there, if you shine these, put the torch on these marks, she's gone like that, hasn't she? What, what does that marry up, like those two marks on there? It's perfect there, isn't it? Yeah, spot on, spot on. Yeah. Forced her into it, hasn't he? The 29 year old cyclist has just gone into surgery. Two others are also being treated in hospital. As Bob and Richie start marking up the scene evidence, officers hunting for the suspected driver make a breakthrough. We've made an inquiry at the public house, oh, just yeah. up the road. They're saying that they know this guy, saying that he was in there with his girlfriend. But based on the back of that, we've done some digging and found out where she lives. We're at the address. She's there. Mm -hmm. He's not. She's saying she was in the car, but we don't know who was driving. So we're going to... Have they locked her up? Yeah, we're going to arrest her. With a woman in custody after admitting to being in this car, officers now suspect there was a couple involved. And they've just had a tip-off about the man they're looking for. The suspected driver is thought to be hiding at a hotel 10 miles away. Thanks for doing this arrest inquiry for us. Um, this guy's been giving us the runaround most of the afternoon um, since the collisions come in. Staircase up, yeah. An arrest team has just arrived. It's upstairs, isn't it? Police! Police! Wake up. Listen to me. I'm arresting you for two counts of dangerous drive causing serious injury, failing to stop at a road traffic accident. Get out of bed. Got a breath laser with us? Yeah. OK, take a deep breath and blow into the machine. OK, sample taken. I'm further arresting you for driving a motor vehicle over the prescribed limit. Four eight um, males in custody. I got his phone, his um, set of Volkswagen keys in his in his back pocket. Oh, Hello. The male is now in custody. Confirm we got the driver in custody. Suspect driver, yeah, him and the female so both are now in custody. Well, he certainly fled the scene, didn't he, going that far? It's been almost six hours since the couple abandoned their car, leaving a cyclist fighting for her life on the grass verge. But as it's being recovered, Dean's just spotted something he thinks might be significant about the driver. The thing with it, driver's seat is very close to the steering wheel. 
which will be interesting. I don't know if you had the presence of Mike to pull the seat forward before he got out, or after he got out, to make it look as if he wasn't driving. But it's very close. Well, they got the girlfriend in as well, so uh, yeah, we'll see. Just seeing the seats right up on the steering wheel. Well, the girl is driving it. No airbags have gone off. So. Okay, yeah, might be. That's going to be the issue, I think. Are they going to say who was driving at the time? I'm driving up the four foot nine, okay. And there's a van that's got all this light and it's down in the hedge. I'll get some dispatched over there now. Officers have been called to the scene of this early morning crash where a 64-year-old delivery driver has died. Bale's been found inside the van. They started doing CPR, but sadly at the scene he died from his injuries. Collision investigator PC Rhys Dickinson needs to find the evidence to work out why this van has left the road. We've got damage on the trees up there. And then the driver's side wheels are carrying on down through here. And as you can see from the flags, it goes directly to where the, the uh, vans come to rest. At the moment, all I can say is this, the path has come. Why? Don't know yet. The marks start on the tarmac surface here. You can just about see where it comes through and then uh, basically hits the central barrier. You can see, obviously, with the flex in it, it's gone slightly onto the other side. Reese has spotted some tiny details to help reveal the van's movements. These marks are where the stones have got stuck underneath the tyres. We call them road grindings, where it's come through. The stones at the end of it have got, like, polished surfaces on them from where it's literally been ground away. He still needs to prove that it was this van and not another vehicle that made contact with the central barrier. It's like it's been sawn around the uh, rim of the wheel from the, uh, the wire on the centre barrier. The rim of the wheel was very shiny, which tied in with the damage, I could say, was from the central rope barrier. Because as the vehicle was grinding against the ropes, it was putting these little gouges into the side of the wheel. It's another piece of the puzzle, basically, which shows that this vehicle is the one that collided with the central barrier. Our basic job is to find out what's happened. So, was there another vehicle involved that's caused him to come over to this side? From the first marks we've got, just before he's hit the barrier, there's no breaking at all. If you were falling asleep or if you were intoxicated, you hit the barrier, you think that would make you wake up and slam your brakes off. There's nothing all the way into here. So, you should survive that collision. So why hasn't he? Reese is being assisted by inquiry team officers, PCs Fred Hill and Di Thomas. Seatbelt was on. Yes. No airbag deployment. No. Nothing's come into the cab. Did he have an head injury? No, nothing at all, mate. No injuries, no injuries at all. I'm going to seize his phone. Yes. And that's the only thing I'll take out of there. Right, phone. Still on, I'm ringing you. And people are ringing it. Oh, we're off. Yeah. Thanks, we are. Officers are still trying to trace the driver's family to tell them what's happened. It's a difficult one because you would like to answer it to say, to find out whether it's a family member. But then you also got to be mindful that uh, if you do, then they're going to want to know why the police are answering the phone especially at this time, because we're waiting for the message to be delivered. And we're also always mindful that uh, with social media these days, people coming by could have been taking photographs of the van. It could already be on Facebook, so we try to get hold of the family as soon as we can. This crash has happened on a major road connecting South Wales to the Midlands. Get a one minute for an update, some of the lorry drivers get 
The impact of the northbound carriageway being closed for more than four hours is being felt. We're just starting to uh, do recovery now. Um, it's in an awkward position, so it's going to be at least an hour until uh, until we're open, at least. Started at four o'clock this morning. Yeah. Picked up at the company, 5.10. Was on the road there to Abbey, which makes sense coming up here. Yeah. Down the A40. On the windscreen, there was a dash cam. It's actually in a locked container. That's the ones? I knew that could contain vital evidence for the investigation because we've got no other witnesses. That will do the dash cam, I would say. There's no guarantee the evidence you think is going to be on there is going to be on there. Call it up, Easty. Lovely job. Back in the office, and Reese is downloading the data from the dash cam, and it has captured the crash. We're just about to view the footage from the fatal this morning. Can I give you a ring back in about a half hour? Thanks, mate. It's a real mix of emotions when you're about to watch it. You have the trepidation of you're hoping everything you've done at the scene is right, but also the fact that I'm about to watch a collision where a man's died, and these are the last moments. Here we go. He's on the 449. Four four yeah, now that's the 449, yeah. At 6.03, which... 6.03.52. There's no big acceleration at all, is there? It's not, he's gradually staying around that mark, isn't he? His speed is... He's flashed him in. He's Good back enough. up to the speed limit he, now. Yeah, but he flashed him in then. 93. Oh. Why are you suddenly decided to go to speed up? That's a change in manner of driving, isn't it? Yes. He's staying in that lane, isn't he? There. That's, there you go. Here we go. Curb. Yeah. Across the road. There's no brake in there, is He's there? rolling all the way. He's rolling now. Yeah, there's no braking at all. No steering and nothing. Mm. Rolls all the way. One second he's in control, and the next second the, the vehicle is veering. For no reason at all, swerve to the near side. It doesn't go into the drain, but very close. Slowly comes back across the road, hits the barrier, loses 13 kilometres an hour, so that's purely the impact, and then just rolls all the way in. They're not doing anything, but he definitely isn't driving before the impact with the trees. It was a perfectly survivable crash. Just from the impact, there's no reason that would kill you. A few days later, a post-mortem examination was carried out on the man who died. It revealed that the driver had a heart attack while he was behind the wheel. It's there. It's there. After three cyclists were struck by a car in a hit and run, police have arrested a couple thought to have been involved. While they still don't know who was driving, Bob and Richie are trying to confirm the movements of the car at the time of the crash. Actually, so that's there. So that seems starting to step out, and then his rear one is coming through. Sometimes when you look at marks on the road, you have to remember that they're all being created at a slightly different time. To physically do it somehow, even if it's just with a little toy car, it assists us in working out the dynamics. For whatever he's reason, whether it's luck, He's done well to get it well, to straighten up. There's deviation there, isn't it? That at the point where the fourth cyclist is struck. Yeah. But they still need to track the couple's movements. Are you the lady that's called in? Marvellous. And have now started to piece together what they did after they drove away from the crash scene and abandoned the car. 
The inquiries led us to a witness who said that he was passing, had seen the vehicle and they flagged him down and he picked them up, um, drove back almost to the scene itself. Dismissed it, asking, you know, what, what, what's happened up there before driving into Wesk. The passing driver took them to the town less than three miles away from the scene of the crash and dropped them off at another pub. Right, so let me just try and clarify then. When you got there, there's a black Corsa. But now inquiry team officers are chasing up reports of an argument overheard outside a shop in the same town. OK, so who was with you then at the time? So could this be connected? CCTV from the shop has captured the people involved. The witness I spoke to, yep. basically what he, he says is, he just looks over, sees an altercation between four people. However, one of them turns around and says, you were driving with my mother in the car. The footage reveals it's the couple arrested in connection with a crash. Seen here with the woman's son, she'd called him to pick them up. And he's clearly not happy with her partner. So for us then, we can now start mapping their movements after the collision has taken place. Went into a local pub in Usk, and then decided to call her son then to take them away from the area. For us, is painting a picture in terms of how desperate they were to flee the scene and not be identified and not be caught. The man involved in the crash isn't currently well enough to be interviewed, but officers are able to speak to the woman. She says that they'd only just left a nearby pub when the crash happened. When you left the pub, who was driving? Myself, me. Not only is she admitting being involved, she's now saying she was the driver. Our thoughts were, well, he's the driver. He was known to us to some extent for similar offences. So when she said she was the driver, it did come as a bit of a surprise. What happened to the point of impact? Yes. Tell me about that. Okay. I noticed something going in the road, and I swear, I see, obviously, I knew the cyclist was there. I swerved left. And then I kind of went right and then left again. And then I felt a bang. Um, mm -hmm. I thought, you know, a hedge or something had been hit. And the car kind of came to a halt. How far was the car from? The cyclists were, they were gone. There was no cyclists there. But the car that she claims to have been driving had actually struck three of the four cyclists. So it was the two sisters out with their partners. We know at the time that they were, they were all riding in single file. They were coming to the end of their ride. Responsible cyclists, lights, helmets, doing everything right. The fourth cyclist, as a result of her injuries, she went into cardiac arrest on two occasions. Her sister, who's the anaesthetist, and her brother-in-law, they actually brought her back. Twice she'd gone into cardiac arrest and they brought her back to life twice. Police know that the couple had been drinking heavily the night before and had gone into two pubs on the day of the crash. When the woman was arrested, she was under the drink drive limit. But as this test was done six hours after the crash, they need to wait for a back calculation to work out the alcohol levels in her blood at the time she was driving. A few days later, Richie and Bob now have their first opportunity to bring the bike and the car together to reconstruct the moment the two made contact. That's huge, isn't it, that impact? It's horrendous, that damage, or you think that's all body. You could actually work out what her position was at that time the car struck her. This is all leg and hip. And then here, we've got this skin. Oh, this, this is the arm. It's all that position. So you can see it there. So that's the you can see the the contour of the arm. 
and then the skin on the top is probably the wrist and the hand. It's horrendous to think how much force that pedal cyclist was subject to. That is the worst impact damage I've seen of a, a cyclist being struck by a vehicle. Intention is quite obvious from the night, isn't it? They've evaded the scene, haven't even offered any first aid to the people they've hit, and off they go, and all they're concerned about is themselves, and just leave the scene. The woman who says she was driving is back to answer more questions, and this time she's claiming that she was only doing what her boyfriend told her to do. And he was just saying, um, you know, drive it, drive it fast, and drive it like you stole it. I was like, well, shut up, just shut up, I'm saying to him. Okay. Did you drive it like you stole it? No. In respect to that, then, do you know what speed you were doing? I wouldn't have been going fast. Okay. The driver indicated that she was doing approximately 35 to 40 miles an hour. Um, looking at it, I found that very implausible. So the police want to find out if speed could be a factor in why she lost control of the car. With weather conditions similar to how they were at the time, Bob and Richie go back to the scene to carry out more tests. Everything we do about calculating speeds but then the physics, the biggest factor in it all is, is how grippy the road surface is. We use an accelerometer um, which we place in the windscreen of the vehicle and it gives us the, the rate of deceleration value of the vehicle, which gives us the coefficient of friction for the road surface. What we were able to say is, had she been travelling at that 35 to 40 miles an hour, she'd have been able to stop uh, within a very short distance. The fact of the matter is, she travelled 86 metres down that road, sliding across the road surface, which suggested that she was travelling significantly higher speed than the one she said she was. There is considerable damage to the driver's side at the rear, and yet you're saying that you were still unaware that you'd collided with the cyclists. I just didn't see them. You didn't see them, OK. The woman was charged with causing serious injury by dangerous driving. The results of the back calculation revealed she was likely to have been over the legal limit to drive at the time of the crash. If she was sober, would she have gone that fast into that bend? And yeah, the alcohol has significantly impaired her judgment and ability to drive a vehicle. She pleaded guilty and was jailed for two years and three months. The man was released without charge. Quite clearly, the two people in the car at the time didn't care about anyone at all. Just left her there for dead. She received a 27-month sentence, but she's handed out a life sentence to those people. The 29-year-old cyclist spent more than three months in hospital. She owes her life to the actions of her sister. Thank goodness that, you know, your sisters are medically trained, you know, and they were able to do what they, they did on the day and, and save your life.